Woody biomass offers tremendous opportunities to replace fossil-based raw materials. But in order to do this, the emphasis on truly sustainable forestry takes center stage. Here in Finland, the forest played a key role in bringing the country out of poverty. Today, 80% of Finland is covered in forest, making it one of the most forested countries in the world. 200 years ago, that was not the case. Finland was one of the poorest countries in Europe, and our forests were overexploited, almost raped by slash and burn agri agriculture and poorly done forest management. Indeed, the Finnish word for rape, raiskaus, was originally applied for the destruction of forests. There was a time when large areas of the country were left barren by such activity. By the mid-1800s, changes were afoot. Due to the booming growth of sawmills and the paper industry, the forest acquired significant economic value. As the tens of thousands of smallholder farmers began to realize the potential value of the forest in their land, a culture of forest management started to develop. The simple rule of planting new trees to replace those harvested became the norm. A bit over 100 years, our forests has been managed intensively. A lot of R&D, well-organized professionals, and hundreds of thousands of forest owners have together developed remarkable renewable resource offering all kind of ecosystem services for all of us. This tree is not growing now. It will wait a few months more and then it will start to grow together with 30 billion other trees in Finland. Together, they will produce one million cubic meters of new biomass every day. The forest growth rate is estimated to be 103 million cubic meters a year. Annually, 75% of this total growth is harvested. Forests play an important role in Finland's economy. The sector offers annually 66,000 jobs and 4.3% of our GMP. Finland's prosperity is built on green gold, and more than half of it belongs to private owners. People see it as a, something, if I plant a tree, my grandchildren are going to be the one that actually reap the benefits. But, but it's seen as a sort of a way of, of sort of providing for people, and that, gives the, that also gives the motivation to keep it in as good shape as possible. Almost three million hectares of Finland's forests are protected. This equals to 13% of the entire forest area. The majority of that is fully outside any forestry measures. Forests play an extremely important role in the fight against climate change and biodiversity loss. When used wisely, they act as a carbon sink, a source of raw materials to replace fossil resources, and as valuable habitats for countless species. But in order to make the best possible science-based decisions, we need accurate forest data. Forest data is really important when running sustainable forestry. Finnish national forest inventory is 100 years old. During that time, we have been able to get huge amount of exact data from our forests, and that has been helping us to develop our forestry so that we are utilizing the opportunities in a forest, but not over-exploiting our resources. Satellite imagery we have been using already for decades. Nowadays we are using also LiDAR, photogrammetry and all kinds of sensors to get more reliable information and, and data about forests. The multidisciplinary Academy of Finland Competence Center, UNITE, brings together expertise from forestry, geospatial technologies and gamification. The power of games is harnessed to motivate and educate better forest management practices. It also offers new ways to reach both forest professionals, as well as a broad audience interested in forestry, ecology and recreation. The flagship develops tools, technologies and applications for forest data collection based on remote sensing and mobile laser scanning. These are crucial technologies in adapting to climate change. 
Many different both abiotic and biotic damage risk to forests are increasing in the future. And we need to have uh, these warning systems, but also be prepared in forest planning, for example, to, to make uh, decisions where we will consider uncertainties and different damage risks to forests. One of the most severe threats to our forests is the spruce bark beetle. This invasive species is thriving, particularly due to climate change. Millions of hectares of forests across Europe have already been destroyed by this insect. Detecting and treating the earliest signs of bark beetle action can help prevent the wide-ranging effects of such an attack. However, these warning signs are not visible to the naked eye. Researchers are using the latest remote sensing technologies to reveal the stress caused by drought and heat that makes the trees vulnerable to insects. For example, using drones together with multispectral laser scanning, you can have a nice images where based on different colors you can see if there is a problem. This technology is able to reveal a spruce bark beetle attack by the moisture changes in individual trees before it's too late. Climate change is also propelling increased wind speeds, threatening our forests. Wrong decisions in forest management can cause severe storm damage after harvesting. Building on complex data, scientists have been able to create tools that enable forest owners to make better decisions regarding forest management. We can use very accurate forest data. We call them microstand information, very small scale information. And using that information together with the topographical information and roughness of the terrain, so we can predict the wind speeds for different points of the forest and also threshold wind speeds ne needed for damaging forests. So we can use that to, to in a way, play that if you make a clear cut in here or there, so does the edge stand be become risk? In another recent article, researchers revealed that the shape and growth of the tree stems have altered in the boreal forests. As an example, the new information has a big impact on the mathematical models used for predictions in carbon sequestration. So, in all forest planning decision supports and calculations, we need information for tree volume and stand volume. And for that, we need to information for tree height, and diameter, and how the tree stems are tapering, so the shape of the stem. And with that accurate information, we can provide accurate estimates for forest development and also harvesting possibilities, for example, or carbon sinks of forests and so on. These technologies and research efforts have a clear aim to contribute to a climate-smart and ecologically sustainable forestry. Because it's the only way that, that using that we can both mitigate climate change and adapt to, to climate change. So it requires from us both carbon sequestration in forests, use of food in, in products which substitute carbon, short-term or long-term products, but also to increase resilience of forests against different natural disturbances. So that is the urgent in everywhere in Europe and globally. There is a great need for innovation in forest-based bioproducts to phase out fossil-based resources. But simultaneously, we also need to put a serious effort in ensuring the resilience of our forests that are in a key role when it comes to mitigating and adapting to climate change. A sustainable bioeconomy is built without contradiction between ecological objectives and forest use. By joining forces, we can ensure that the decision makers have the best available knowledge to navigate us through the global challenges towards a better future. <laughs>